For today's video we're looking at a comptometer model 993S, electromechanical key driven adding machine, made in the UK in 1964. In part 1 we looked at the machine when it first arrived and the work that needed to be carried out to get it working again. I'll put a link to that video on screen about now. This machine was made by the Bell Punch Company and has the official model number of 912VZS. 9 because the keys go up to 9, 12 because it has 12 columns, VZ, well I don't actually know what the VZ stands for, and S because it has a second storage register. Around 1960 Bell Punch bought the UK rights to the comptometer name from what was left of Felton Tarrant, who had been making comptometers since the late 1800s, and at that time Bell Punch rebranded their Sumlock machines as comptometers. If we ignore the second storage register at the top of the machine, it's very much like any other comptometer or key driven adding machine. As soon as you press one of the keys, that number is added into the register below. So if I press a 4 in this column, it'll be added into the register below. And if I now press a 7, that'll also be added to give us 11. So I'll just clear that from that register with the clear button on the right here. You can enter the digits in multiple columns at the same time. So if I want to enter 42,369, I can position my hands accordingly and with a single press, the 42,369 is entered into the register. And I can add the comma with one of these swing up indicators like that. This system can allow for very fast input of numbers, and the skilled comptometerists could fairly fly through their additions. So if I now want to add to that 22,245, and 13,450, and 21,935, it gives us the answer 99,999, with very few hand movements. This would have been the same with the older, non-electric comptometers, and I did often wonder what benefit the electric machines would offer. However, having now used this machine, I can see the improvement on the ease of use and speed. If we look at this early Model B Felton Tarrant machine, pressing the number 1 key needs a fairly light press to enter the number but by the time we get up to the number 9, it needs quite a firm press to move the number wheel by 9 digits. If I want to enter 579, I can position my fingers and enter the number, but it needs quite a precise and firm press. If I don't fully press the number 9, the machine will only add part of that 9, and the calculation will be incorrect. On later machines they added a controlled key system, whereby a button to the right of the keyboard would pop up if you didn't press a key properly, like that, and then the rest of the columns on the machine would be locked up, allowing you to complete the press of the button you hadn't pressed fully and reset the controlled key, or if you didn't know where your mistake had happened, you could just use the handle to reset the machine and start over again. If we do the same thing on the electric machine, the keys all require the same amount of pressure, so a 1 doesn't feel any different from a 9. And also the keys can't be part pressed, so there was no need for the controlled key system on the electric machine. So long as you've pressed the key, the correct number should be added. So again, if I want to add 579, I can position my fingers and press, and it's much more like a little dab rather than a press on the old machine. I'll just do a little bit of addition on the old Felton Tarrant machine. So if we add 1,289 plus 9,900 plus 4,775 plus 3,299, we get the answer of 19,263. But you can see that there's a reasonable amount of effort that goes into pressing the keys. And if we repeat that on the 993, so that's 1,289 plus 9,900 plus 4,775 plus 3,299. And again we get the answer of 19,263. 
It isn't significantly quicker with me operating the machine, but you can imagine that a good operator could fairly fly around on the lighter keyboard. On the right hand side of the keyboard this machine has columns for the old sterling currency. We have the pennies on the right hand side. Uh, there were 12 pence in a shilling, so if I add 9 plus 2 it'll show 11 pence. If I then add one more it'll carry across to give us one shilling. So if I now add another 18 shillings to show 19 shillings and then add one more it'll carry across to have a full pound. And then the remaining columns are all full pounds which of course is base 10 so it's more like calculators we're used to these days. If I fill the machine up to 999 million 999,999 pounds, 19 shillings and 11 pence and then add one more penny you should see it carry all the way across to give us 1 billion pounds. Thusly the carrying mechanism is purely mechanical and it doesn't involve the motor at all and it's quite fun to watch it in slow motion as it ripples across the entire register like that. Doing subtraction is a little bit trickier because these machines can only add. If I enter a 7 in this column here and then I want to take away 5 I have to use the complementary numbers which are these smaller numbers to the left of the main number on the keyboard. But also for the last digit of the number I'm subtracting I have to reduce that number by 1. In this case it's a single digit number and so my 5 is going to become a 4. So I look for the small 4 on the keyboard which is here actually on the 5 button and if I press that if we ignore the carry that's happened it is correct because it shows 2 so 7 minus 5 is 2. There were various different things you could do to get rid of the carry. You could simply put a flag up and ignore it and just look at the two. Or you could also enter nines across all the digits to the left of the actual number you were subtracting which would move that carry out of the way. So if I do that you'll see with each nine I enter it moves one digit to the left so you can ignore it. Or on some machines like the Felton Tarrant there would be a little lever here which you would hold while you were subtracting your number which would prevent the carry from happening. In the case of this machine it has these levers but they operate in a slightly different way. When I press the lever here rather than preventing the carry from happening it enters nines all the way across the keyboard to get rid of the um, carry like this. There's also the zeros and nines rules to follow when you're subtracting on a comptometer. If for instance the number I'm subtracting from has four digits and the number I'm subtracting only has three then I have to subtract the leading zero as well. So if I enter one, two, three, four into the register like that and I want to subtract 876 Firstly I have to take away 1 from the 876 making it 875 and then I press the small complementary numbers for 0875 so we'll just do that 0875 and then I clear away the carry which is here so press that button and it leaves us with the answer of 358. Next, if the number you're subtracting has zeros at the end, you ignore these zeros and take away one from the first number to the left. So if I enter 5678 like that and I want to take away 4300, firstly I take away one from the 3 making it 4200 and then press the complementary numbers for 4 and 2. So that would be 4 and 2 two like that and then we'll clear away the carry as normal leaving the answer of 1378. And now for the nines rule. If a nine appears at the beginning of or in the middle of the number you're subtracting you just skip past that nine and press nothing. If a nine appears at the end of the number you take away one as normal and press the complementary eight. So if I enter 10,032 like that and we'll stick the comma in and I want to subtract from that 9990 
I take 1 off the first digit to the left of the 0, making it 9980. And then not forgetting to press the leading 0, I press the complementary numbers 4, 0, and then I skip past the 9, skip past another 9, and then I press the small 8, and then I clear away the carry, and it leaves us with the answer, as always, of 42. It's fairly simple once you get used to it, and you'll find that you won't have to think about it so much, apart from when you're trying to explain it on camera. Multiplication is fairly simple, and the process is fundamentally the same as using a pinwheel calculator. So if I want to multiply 875 by 48, I simply position my fingers over the keys for 875, so let's look at 875, like that. And then in the units position, I press 8 times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then keeping my fingers in the same position, I just move one column to the left, so I'm in the tens position, and I press 4 times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're done. And of course the answer, 48 times 875 is 42,000. Division is a little bit trickier, but it's not too bad once you've got used to it. So if I want to divide 365 by 52, I enter the 365 all the way to the left of the keyboard, like that. And now to work out where the decimal place is going to be, there are three digits in the dividend and two digits in the divisor. So 3 minus 2 equals 1, so the decimal point is going to go one place to the right, which will be here. The usual rules for subtraction apply, so I have to take 1 away from my 52, making it 51. And then I position my fingers over the complementary keys for 51. The next thing I do is look at the column to the left of where my fingers are, which is currently a 0, so I do nothing. And now I look at the digits directly beneath where my fingers are, and that's 36, and you can't take 52 from 36, so again I do nothing, and I move one column to the right. I now look at the column directly to the left, which is a 3, so I'm going to press the numbers I've got my fingers on three times, so 1, and that's now clocked up to 4, so it'll be 4 times, 2, 3, and it's clocked up to 5, so 4, 5, and it clocked up to 6, so one more, 6. This time that column didn't move, so I now look at the column directly beneath my fingers, which is 53, and you can take 52 from 53, so I'll press one more time. And now I move across to the right again, and the column to the left of where my fingers are shows a 0, so I do nothing. I then look beneath where my fingers are, which is 10. You can't take 52 from 10, so I move my fingers across the column again. Now I look at the column to the left, which shows a 1. So I press one time, and that column didn't clock up, so I now ignore that, and look at the columns directly beneath my fingers, which shows 48. You can't take 52 from 48, so I move across a column. I now look at the column to the left of where my fingers are, which is this time a 4, so I press 1, it's clocked up to 5, so I'm aiming for 5, 2, 3, it's gone to 6, 4, 5, uh, it's now gone to 7, 6, 7, and it's gone up to 8, so 8. And it didn't clock up that time, so now I can ignore that, and I look at the digits directly beneath my fingers, which is 64, and I can take my 52 from 64, so I press one time. I now skip across the column, and I look at the column directly to the left of where my fingers are, which shows a 1, so I press one time. It didn't clock up, so I ignore that, and look at the digits directly beneath my fingers, which is 68, and I can take the 52 from, from 68, so I press again. And now I skip across the column, and I look at the column directly to the left of where my fingers are, which is a 1, so I'm going to press one time. It clocked up to 2, so I'll press a second time. It didn't move that time, so I can now ignore that column, and look at the columns directly beneath my fingers, which shows 56. I can take my 52 from 56, so I'll press again. And then I move across to the right, and I look at the column directly to the left of where I am, which is a 0, so I do nothing. 
and I look at the columns directly beneath my fingers and that's 40 and I can't take 52 from 40 so um, I would now move to the right but I have now run out of keyboards so I think that is probably job done. So we're left with the answer of 7.01923040. It'll get a bit uh, inaccurate towards the right hand end because we ran out of keyboard. You can extend it, it's slightly inaccurate, but bearing in mind I ran out of um, keyboard at this point, but I could go along one more comma, a column and my second finger is in a gap so it does nothing but it would show me that I need to press four times at this point. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and it's gone up to five, so we'll do the five, and one more for the six. So we've now got 7.01923064, and if we were to say that it's probably accurate to about that point, and then we did a roundup, that would be 7.01923.1. And if we want to check that on one of these newfangled electronic calculators, we can enter 365 divided by 52 and equals, and it gives us the answer of 7.01923.0769. And if we were to round that to six decimal places, as we did on the uh, other machine, it'll give us 7.019231, which is the same answer. So that's pretty good. So that just leaves us with the additional storage register to take a look at. This is very much like the memory on a regular calculator. If I had a shop and I sold six chocolate bars costing two shillings and sixpence each, one, two, three, four, five, six, and also four radios costing twelve pounds and six shillings each, one, two, three, four, and finally nine rubber dinghies costing four pounds, ten shillings and sixpence each. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That gives us a total takings for the day of 90 pounds, 13 shillings and sixpence. And I can add that into the storage register using the plus button here. And that also clears out the main register for more calculations. And now I have to work out the expenses for the day. I pay a member of staff five shillings and sixpence per hour for six hours. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And we had a delivery of four bags of coal costing two pounds and sixteen shillings each. So that's one, two, three, four, like that. And then that gives us a total expenses of twelve pounds seventeen shillings. So we can take that from the takings by pressing the minus button here, which will subtract it from the storage register, giving us the total for the day of £77, 16 shillings and sixpence to put in the bank. That more or less covers the operation of the Comptometer 993S. If you're interested in mechanical calculating machines, Jap Scherfius has a very good YouTube channel and website with lots of information about the history of these machines. Also, Chris Staker has an excellent YouTube channel with lots of unusual calculating devices. I'll put links to both of those in the description. I think that more or less covers it for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more repairs and vintage stuff coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.